no one wants to be successful and built up this success in business and achieve these different goals and monetary uh, things that you've wanted to accomplish, but then when you get there, your relationships are terrible. That's why you see these people that are multi, multi millionaires, but they're depressed and suicidal, right? It's because their relationships aren't in check. So relationships are critical to living a fulfilled life. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Take a sip of water after that. This is episode 86, the Sales Wolves podcast, as you can see, flying solo once again. Actually, not flying solo. We've got John here and... John has been waiting all his life for this podcast, but Joseph is away at a conference. Uh, he will be back on the next Sales Wolves podcast, I believe, uh, but I'm extremely uh, excited to talk to you about an important topic today, and that is relationships. And no, this isn't a um, dating podcast. We're not talking about just those types of relationships. We're talking about all relationships, but how they fit in. Uh, to winning in all areas of your life. So with your relationships, one thing that I've found is that when things are going bad, it's way more easily noticeable how it carries over into all the other areas of your life. But when things are good, it's not as easy to notice, right? Like you don't necessarily attribute, oh, I'm having a great month this month in my business. It's probably because my wife and I are doing extremely well. But when your wife and my wife and I are doing extremely bad, it's easy to notice how that's uh, carrying over into my business. I'm just in a, in a uh, bad mood or things are just kind of always on my mind and clouding, um, clouding my judgment, different things like that. But what I know is that relationships are key in making sure that all those other areas, your mind, your body, and your business are in check. Couple things here. So with relationships, it's not just your relationships with your spouse and your significant other that are important. It's also the relationships with your friends, it's the relationships with your family, it's relationships with your coworkers. It's really making sure that all of the people that you interact with on a daily basis, that none of that is breeding negativity. Again, We flee from negativity, whether you want to call that the law of attraction, uh, whatever. I just choose to not surround myself with negative people and and to not put myself in situations that are going to breed negativity. One of the biggest ways you can find negativity creep into your life is by allowing negative people in your life. And so the first thing I'll tell you about relationships is choosing, being proactive in finding those positive relationships and seeking out those positive people and building relationships with them and to choke out, not literally choke out, but to alienate yourself from the negative people, from the negative relationships. If you look at your brain as a pie chart, right? So we've got a big circle and 100% is your capacity. That means you're operating at your full capacity, at your full potential. That means you're giving it absolutely everything that you've got. Negative relationships start taking little slivers away from that pie, right? So they start taking a little 5% here, a little 10% here, a little 15% here. That drama that you've been having with your mom for the last eight years that that always weighs on your mind. That's 10% of capacity that's always taken away because of that relationship. That situation that you're having with your spouse this week, it could be taking five, 10% of your capacity away. That situation that you're having with that friend of yours from college, that there's that, that beef that just hasn't been squashed, it's taking that two, three, four, five percent capacity. And what you realize is that your relationships are taking away from your potential, from working and living at capacity. And all of a sudden you realize that, man, I'm actually, I'm actually performing at like 60% of my capacity, 50% of my capacity. I think a lot of you would be shocked if you took a true audit. How do you do that? No idea. But if you took a true audit of the capacity that you're actually uh, living at, 
and able to work at, um, you may be closer to 40 even 30%. And so it's eliminating those things. And every time that you eliminate a negative relationship, either by repairing the relationship or by completely eliminating it, you're able to gain that capacity back to where, okay, now I'm at 60%, now I'm at 70%, now I'm at 80%, and you can get closer to being able to work at your full potential. Now notice I said it's not just eliminating. I'm not telling you to go and every single person that you've had any negative interactions with, you just completely, uh, completely alienate yourself from those people. There are some relationships that are worth saving. I would say that a relationship with your spouse is probably worth saving. Relationship with your parents, probably worth saving. But there's some of those relationships that you have, some of those friends that you've had for, for years and years uh, that are breeding negativity in your life that just need to be completely eh, set to the side and, and move on. Um, that may sound tough, but it's just the reality. If you're serious about becoming a better version of yourself, if you're serious about performing at an optimal level, then these are just things that you're gonna have to do. It just kinda comes with the territory, right? Right, so next thing when it comes to your relationships is it's work. Just like anything in, in life, it's work. And if you look at this idea of investing time rather than spending time, then you will start looking at your relationships a little bit differently. So when I look at the relationship with my daughter, I look at, man, how did I invest my time with her today? Versus how did I just spend my time? Anybody can spend time, right? But the ROI only comes when you're investing in something. And so how are you investing that time with those that you love or with those that you're building relationships with? This is key and it's critical to living, again, at full capacity and living your best life. So like anything, relationships are gonna be work. You've probably heard that a million times about relationships with a spouse, that marriage is work. And it is, it's work. You choose when you get married, to work at becoming the best husband, the best wife, and becoming the best partner for, um, for your spouse that you can possibly be. Is that easy every day? Of course not. Of course it's not easy. But is it worth it? Absolutely. Is it worth it in the relationship that you can build with your spouse? Yes. And is it worth it to be able to perform at an optimal level by having that relationship in a good place? I would say absolutely. So that's the second thing. Relationships are going to be work. The third thing about relationships, and lastly, is that communication is key. You have to be able to communicate with your relationships so that you know whether things are in check or not. The best example I can give is, is with a spouse. You have to be able to communicate with your spouse. This idea of work-life balance, we talk about it so much that work-life balance doesn't really exist. It's more about being aware of the imbalances. And I love, a friend of mine said this the other day, I was having lunch with a guy named Chris Collins here in Greenville, and he said, I don't really, I don't really believe in balance, but I, le I believe in harmony. And man, when he said that, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa stop. He, he, can, he was like on to the next point. I was like, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. What did you just say about harmony and balance? He's like, I, I don't believe in balance, I believe in harmony. I was like, where did you read that? Like, who said that? And he's like, uh, I don't know. I just kind of said it. But man, it was such a beautiful, uh, beautiful way to describe it. That it's more harmony than it is balance. And to me, it's more recognizing the imbalances. It's more being aware when one area of your life gets out of balance and being able to then quickly, quickly adjust. The only way that you're gonna be able to quickly adjust when you notice those imbalances is through communication. Communication is gonna give your relationships the ability to let you know that things are out of balance if you haven't been aware of it already, but then it's gonna let you know how to adjust those things so that you can get back in somewhat of a balance. What you're gonna realize is as quickly as you get in balance, you're gonna get out of balance in another area. So it's this constant flow, and that's why I love looking at it as this just kind of harmony, that the way you go through life. But let me give you a real life example. So my travel schedule is, is pretty crazy, uh, but a few months back, it was giving, getting really, really crazy. Like I was, I was gone many weeks, and then I started doing a lot of speaking engagements and things, conferences on the weekends. And my wife you know, called me, I think we're talking on the phone, and she's just like, hey babe, um, you know, travel's just been, it's, it's been a lot lately. 
And that's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. She just needed to open up, let me know that she was feeling that, that I'd been traveling a little bit too much. And then I could then adjust and adjust my schedule accordingly to be home a little bit more for the next few months. Um, had she not communicated that to me, uh, I'm, I'm a man. Uh, I would say just above, you know, like beating my chest and grunting on a daily basis. And I may not have realized that uh, for another couple of months or may not have realized it until it, have, until it could have potentially negative, negatively affected my relationship with my spouse. But the fact that she was open enough to communicate that to me, hey, I think you're traveling a little much lately. There's been a bunch of weekend stuff on top of the weekly travel. Maybe we should cut that back. And then my um, willingness to say, I understand, hear you loud and clear, and then adjust accordingly. That's huge to be able to have that level of open communication. One last example I'll give you guys, and this will be really something that you can take home and, and hopefully put into use. It's communicating on the front end with your spouse, with your kids, that what your schedule is going to look like for the next week, what it's gonna look like for the next month, and maybe even what it's gonna look like for the next you know, three, four months. Look at maybe like a quarter. Here's an example of what that looks like. Hey, uh, guys, like family meeting, right? Like you're talking to your kids, you're talking to your wife. All right, so for the next 90 days, dad has got to absolutely just, he's gonna be working a ton, right? I'm gonna be working some late nights. I'm gonna be traveling a little bit more than normal. But here's the deal. In 90 days, we're gonna take this trip uh, to Disney World. Or in 90 days, we're gonna go to the lake you know, for four days, no phones, we're gonna have so much fun, here's the things that we're gonna do. Or hey, we're gonna go you know, to the mountains, or we're gonna go to the beach. Or it could be something you know, smaller, you know, depending on what your lifestyle is right now. We could, you know, we're gonna go do this for the weekend here locally. But you're setting the stage for what's gonna happen over the next 90 days. Hey, I'm gonna have to work a bunch, but when I get done, and, and here's my goal, like here's what I hope I'm gonna do in those next 90 days, and then you set that carrot out there at the end of it. But hey, at the end of that, we're gonna go do something awesome. And man, I cannot wait. And then they have something to look forward to. Then it comes where like you get home and they're like, hey, dad, 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 you know, where are you at towards your goal? Because they know that if you hit that goal and if you're able to do what you need to do in those next 90 days, that they're gonna get to take this trip to Disney or they're gonna be able to go to the lake for, for four days with you and they're gonna have this awesome time. But it's communicating that on the front end is so critical so that they know and that they can be aware of what's going on with the schedule, but that they can have this mindset of that it's almost like a team, right? Like we're a team, guys, team huddle, here's what's going on, but here's what's gonna happen at the end of that. And it's really looking at your entire life that way. And so guys, in conclusion, relationships, when you look at all four areas of your life, being your business, your mind, your body, your relationships, to me, relationships are critical. And they're even more critical when you look at living life with fulfillment, living a fulfilled life. No one wants to be successful and built up this success in business and achieve these different goals and monetary uh, things that you've wanted to accomplish, but then when you get there, your relationships are terrible. That's why you see these people that are multi, multi-millionaires, but they're depressed and suicidal, right? It's because their relationships aren't in check. So relationships are critical to living a fulfilled life. And again, it's about investing the time with the relationships, investing that time, not just spending time. It's about eliminating some of those negative relationships or repairing some of those negative relationships so that, again, with that pie chart that you're working out of full capacity, the full capacity that you have to live your best life, and then communication. Communication is key to be winning in this area of relationships, which will help you win in all the other areas of your life. Again, it's easy to recognize when it's negative, when you've got bad relationships, how that can spill over. But what we want you guys to experience here, the Sales Rules Podcast, is we want you to be able to experience when you're winning in your relationships and you're excelling with your relationships, what that spillover feels like into all other areas of your life, especially your business. Because as a salesperson, there is nothing better than going into a sale, knowing that you're winning in all other areas of life and nothing is holding you back from doing your absolute best and living up to your absolute full potential in that moment. And that's the way we want our listeners to be able to live their best life. So guys, with that, this is episode 86 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Again, I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales 
Wolf. Ow!